Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of Elden Ring PvP and another weapon showcase. Today we are taking a look at the Great Pepe. This is a uh, heavy thrusting sword that you can get in a chest east of the Aguil Lake South Grace. I will have an image on screen showing where that's located. This weapon is pretty good. We've all seen it a lot in PvP at this point. We've all seen people spamming the hell out of its running R2s, and we all know how good of a weapon it is. But let's actually take a deep dive into this thing and see what makes it good. First and foremost, this weapon requires 15 strength and 16 dexterity in order to wield. It weighs 6.5 units, and it has impaling thrust as its skill by default. I switched that over to flaming strike, and I'll explain why later. And I'll also explain why that's not necessarily a good skill for the weapon. That said, as far as the upgrade path on this, it's a little strange. In this case, Keen is objectively worse than Heavy. And the reason for that is that they have the same base damage of 279. But Heavy actually gets an A scaling in strength and completely wipes out the dexterity scaling whereas Keen keeps its strength scaling and puts it at E, but only gets a B scaling in dexterity. So, oddly enough, Heavy is actually better for this weapon. So, something a little strange, something to keep in mind, this weapon works very, very good on strength builds. So, that's a pro. That's absolutely a pro. It gives variety to strength builds. That said, moving into the rest of the pros. This weapon, as we all know, the biggest pro is going to, of course, be that it works with the Spear Talisman. But aside from that, it also has great running R2s. We all know it. We've all seen them in action. We've all seen the absurd damage they can deal, how fast they are, how quick the attack comes out, how much distance you cover when you're chasing someone down with that attack. It's phenomenal. There's very, very few downsides with it. The biggest downside to its running R2 is you might accidentally run past your opponent because it covers so much range. That said, other pros of the weapon. The standard R2, it has a good wide sweep and it's good to use as a mix-up. That said, I put Flaming Strike on this weapon, which isn't a bad thing, it's a good Ash of War, but it does somewhat invalidate a standard R2. Reason being, they both cover a wide arc, and where you could use one, being, you know, a standard R2, and deal a little bit of damage, you could go for Flaming Strike instead, in hopes that you hit with the last few frames of the attack, and that if you do, uh, you'd be able to get the follow-up, which is a guaranteed combo. So, realistically, Flaming Strike completely invalidates the R2 attacks for this weapon. Uh, the standard R2s, of course, not the running. That said, another good thing to do with this weapon is, of course, the jumping R2 into R1 combo. That is something that you do see pretty often in PvP as well. If you're fighting against this, you can basically bet that someone is going to be doing a running R2 attack or a jumping R2 attack against you. It's pretty common. We've all seen it. That said, something else that you can do with this weapon that I try to take advantage of more often than a lot of other people is being able to turtle poke. Realistically, you don't see too many people turtle poking with this weapon unless they have it paired with a great shield. And if they have it paired with a great shield, the majority of the time, all they do is turtle poke with it. But there are a lot of other things you can do with the weapon. You can use the shield as a bit of a decoy, run towards someone, shield up, make them think you're going to turtle poke, and then when they roll away from you, you can actually have that uh, as a buffered R1 attack, or a buffered running R1, or buffered running R2 even, for that matter. That adds more... Uh, variety to what you're doing, it adds mix-ups, it keeps your opponent on their toes, and doesn't let them know what to expect. And maybe sometimes you do want to throw in an actual turtle poke. If you do, and you're using a medium shield, 
be careful with it, especially against heavier weapons, but against smaller, medium weapons, um, go for it. Why not? You just have to be mindful of your stamina and be careful not to let your guard be broken. And it's just another tool in the toolbox. It's another utility. One utility that I don't take advantage of, that I definitely should, is playing unlocked with this weapon, going for charged attacks while unlocked, um, and then canceling the charge attack to do the backstep attack, following up that backstep uh, slash with uh, R1 to do that chase forward. It's something that I really don't take advantage of with this weapon with any of the thrusting swords or the curved swords that have a uh, R2 cancel. It's another utility, it's something that has its time and place, and I should be more conscious of using it, because, again, it adds mix-ups, it keeps the opponent on their toes, and it adds variety to the fight. That said, for the cons of the weapon, realistically, there are attacks on this weapon that are better than others. The running R2s, you'll see them a lot. And eventually, your opponent may get wise to your running R2s if you keep using them. So eventually, you might get yourself parried. You gotta be mindful. You gotta be tactical. And not spam the hell out of it. And that's really kind of what I'm getting at with all the pros, all the options that I've mentioned for mixing up what you're doing. I realize that I'm not the best at doing it. It's something that I'm trying to be better at. And it's going to take practice. And a lot of players who do use this weapon, well, they might get to that point where they would decide, hey, I need to practice this too. And if they do, and they all start getting better at it, well, we're going to have a bit of a hard time against this thing. Because it is a phenomenal weapon. It has so much good going for it that the only, pr uh, the only con I really have is that if you're not mindful of your attacks, you'll get parried. You can't trade with bigger poking weapons because they'll deal more damage. But if you play mindfully, you play tactfully, you play strategically, you mix up your attacks, you take advantage of the full moveset, there's really no con for this weapon that you can't overcome by just improving your general gameplay. So it is what it is. It's one of the best weapons in the game, in my opinion. It's going to stay that way for a while. The only weird thing is that uh, even though it seems like it would be more of a dexterity weapon, it's actually better for strength builds. So, yeah, that's all I've got for this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one, though. Thank you all for stopping by. I uh, will have another video coming soon on the... It's either going to be the Bloodhound Fang or the Flowing Curved Sword. I haven't decided which. Let me know which one you guys want to see first. I'll see you all next time.